I just want to know how annoying it was to have to call someone by a nickname that they made up for themselves. Uh, like, for instance, <laughs> like for instance, you know, if I was, I don't know, Joe podcasting and I forced my guys to call me that, wouldn't you find that irritating? And now I present the host of Wrestling With Reality, the hashtag Scandinavian God, Johnny Podcasting, John Wagland. Richie, I'll let you handle that one first. <laughs> oh, man. You know, it, it was it was interesting, dude. I mean, the guy is just when you figure out who he really is, it uh, you really get to pull the curtain back, and it's it's like the Wizard of Oz almost. Bro. <laughs> I, I've always felt that because uh, he, he calls himself Johnny Podcasting, uh, I think he should have been called Johnny B. Bad at Podcasting. Oh, <laughs> whoa, hey, shots hey, fired. Ouch. Anyway, uh, this is the Mike Durban Show, episode forty nine. Uh, we have an unprecedented roundtable here. This is a collection of gentlemen, a collection of podcasters that I thought we would never see collected in the same room. But here we are from the Creative Control Network. We have the head, Joe Feeney, the head of the snake, Mr. Joe Feeney True. from the It's Husey Hello Show, the great Husey from Ireland. What's up, player? From the brand new R&R Podcast Network, we have two gentlemen. Welcoming back to the show, the great Rob Francois. Rad Rob. Good to see you, Mike. Good to see you. And for the first time ever on the Mike Durbin Show, the real deal heel, Mr. Richie Reardon. Good to be with you, man. All right. So, guys. Sorry, All right, Mike. Let's, let's go back in time. So, uh, the Reality <laughs> Check Podcast Network. You had Mr. John Wanglin, Johnny Podcasting, the hashtag Swedish God. And then, uh, oh, hold on, hold on. The, the, the Scandinavian guy. Oh, Sorry, Scandin- I, okay. Yeah, I just we got to get that, you know, Make factually sure. accurate. Right? Are you still yes. defending him, Rob? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then his partner in crime, you were an actual partner in the business, Rad Rob. And then, Richie, you did the uh, Fig Life with John, which was the, the yep. YouTube show about wrestling figures. And then you had your own podcast. And then you had Wrestling Anonymous, which uh, was your show. You had John on most of the time. And you guys were uh, thick as thieves for months, maybe almost a year, Rob. And then uh, a couple weeks ago, the, the big news came out. There was a split. There was a fracturing in the RCN. Rob and Richie were out. Now, Rob, Richie, tell me what happened. Well, um, there was some stuff going on with the YouTube channel. We were getting some good views in the beginning. John and I, we wanted to start it just for fun in the beginning because we liked wrestling figures and, you know, wrestling as a whole. I'm I'm an admitted mark, dude. I can admit that and wear it like a badge of honor. I don't give a shit what, what people think about me. But um, John, at first, we were doing this for fun. Uh, you know, we were getting two, 300 views a video, and then all of a sudden uh, the number spiked to about four to 5,000. And they wow. consistently stayed that way. And I kept asking him, you know, are these numbers legit? What are we doing here? And he was giving me explanations of, uh, you know, he's playing with the algorithm and different shit like that. So from the get-go of that, I started seeing through his bullshit. So yeah, he, he, was, he, was buying, he was buying a few thousand downloads per show? Or I don't know I don't if know he was works. buying. I don't, I, don't, I don't know how all that works, <clears throat> but I do know there's no way you can go from one day getting two to 300 views to, to four to 5,000. It, di- it didn't make sense. It was yeah, like magic. It's, it's funny you said that yeah. because it, uh, I think it was last week he did the In Your House uh, live stream. <laughs> And it, it lit, at one point, it literally had four viewers. And then by the end of the live stream, it had over 5,000 views. Right. And I don't know how the fuck that's po- like how it's many times four people watch the live stream. I just I, I always and a lot of the fighting in the beginning was off shit like that. Like, yeah. well, you know, we have this many downloads or we're, we're this on the charts or the YouTube's getting these downloads. And I was always just I was busting balls, but I was being realistic about it. Like, dude. I know you're buying downloads or views. Like, like right. everyone knows it. It's it's a right. bad look, especially when people know it, and it's shitty business. It's not ethical. It's not ethical, but it's also like you're investing money if you're buying downloads with really. There's not going to be a payoff. How's there going to be a payoff? Right. You're going to get pay, paid back for this money that you're, he wants. To, he wants to be a big shot. Yeah, but that's what I always thought for you guys. I was like, it sucks for those guys if they're investing with John, where John's like, yeah, we're all going to. I'm just assuming we're all going to partner up. Let's all put up a hundred bucks for this month and, and I'm going to use it for a promotion. And I'm going to use it for this. And then to pull the curtain back with the RCN, yeah. I never spent a dime over there. That's good. That's good. 
Yeah, unfortunately, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> uh, I, I did. But you know, John and I never had a written contract. You know, it's he was like, you know, my word is my bond. You know, so there was never anything in writing. I just said, you know, John, you know, we've been doing this for this was like six months into our, you know, to to me joining his network, and you know, I said. I, I kind of want you know be a partner with you and, and let's you know let's try to make some money let's try to grow this network let's try to get more shows on let's let's do what we can to promote everything and you know he's like yeah that's cool so you know for you know for the longest time our relationship uh, w- was great but I, I will t- <laughs> I will tell you this about I think it was mid February I was on Facebook friends with him and his dad and and his other friends on Facebook and I got into it with Stan Wanglin John's dad. Uh, over the coronavirus and, and a lot of shit that was going on because uh, John's dad is Husey. What was the number? Number thirteen in Brazil. My God, have um, you seen that video? That's tremendous. I knew he was over in South Africa. I didn't know he was over in, in, in Brazil. <laughs> there was the July Fourth party on that guy Jeff Miller's Facebook. Mm-hmm. Uh, John singing karaoke and right in the middle of the song, <laughs> right in the middle of the song, uh, Stanley Wangland is leaving to go home. And just as he's about to get in his car, John yells into the microphone across the garden. He goes, Stand the man, number 13 in Brazil. We'll give it a start. Why stay late? So thank you, baby, number 13 in Brazil. Whoa! On a <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Can't imagine wow. people were leaving the party. <laughs> Uh, the neighbors go, holy fuck, that's Stanley man. <laughs> <laughs> so Sorry, Rob, you, you, Rob, you got into it with his dad? Yeah, I got into it. And that's great, Tuesday. That's that's the great point. I didn't even I didn't even realize that. I, I can't even watch any of John's videos. That's how cringy no. they were. And I was friends with him. But uh, so I got into it with Stan about the pandemic and all that bullshit. And I don't know what your guys' political affiliations are. It really doesn't matter. But, you know, I'm a libertarian leaning, right? And they are true blue, like extreme Democrats who it's funny, quick, fun fact about that. When Stan first came on my show, uh, him and John claimed to be moderates, which (laughs) (laughs) uh, couldn't be farther from the Uh. truth if you follow them on Twitter or Facebook. But anyway, so long story, even longer, Stan and I got into it about the pandemic. They thought I was, I was stupid. I'm not a fucking doctor. They have all these fucking degrees, him and John and, and stand psychologist supposedly supposedly right and you know you got to trust science and, and all that but whatever so i i told stan i said you know what stan this the only time you ever come on my facebook page is to fucking comment on something i post and to leave a negative comment you don't ever interact with me you know or like my post or any of that bullshit anytime you're john uh don't like something that i post you guys always have to throw in your two cents it's the only time I ever hear from you guys on social media so i told stan i said if you got nothing to say man don't say anything at all. And John got pissed off about that. Now, I, I apologize later on to Stan through private message just saying that I was, uh, if I came off as being disrespectful, I'm sorry. And he said, there's, there's no need to apologize. We're good. John, on the other hand, wasn't good. He texted me that night about 1030 uh, and said, you know what, Rob, you have a bad attitude. Nobody wants to do shows with you anymore. Uh, the other people in this network I want to get rid of you, but I've I've been nice to you because we're friends and I want to keep you on and blah, 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 blah. I don't want to talk about it. We'll talk about it tomorrow. I'm like, what the f- <laughs> fuck is that? You're going to drop this shit at me at, at 1030 at night and then say you're going to bed? You know, we'll talk about it tomorrow or Monday. I'm like, fuck that. So I, I went off on him. Uh, so ever since then, ever since February, things were kind of rocky between us two. After that night, John changed all his passwords because I had log- we had shared logins to Spreaker and some of the other Chartable and some of their sites, you know, because we were partners and all that. Changed all his passwords. Said next show you put up, email me, I'll put it up for you. And I'm like, what the fuck? Never ever discussed kicking me out as a partner. Never, we never ever ever once had that conversation. And you know, I never received a fucking dime from him either. And I saw. Before I was kicked out of the Spreaker login and before he moved to Art19, I saw what was deposited into his account for the fucking CPM, the ad revenues. I didn't get a fucking dime from that at all. Wow. So fast forward to last week. I got into it with them again about the riots and all the stuff that's been going on lately. And (laughs) I knew it was going to happen. And I kind of did this on purpose. I kind of... 
I, I wanted out and I, I knew how I could get John's fucking goat. And after I got into it with them on Facebook again, John messaged me about two minutes later and said, you know what? I think it's just better, better off if we, if we part ways, you know, there the other people in this, the same shit, like, he, hold on, sorry. He prefaced it by saying he can never say it on its own, bro. He's always got to say other people are saying it's yeah. never his opinion or what and he says. We'll get into the other people here in a second, but uh, he prefaced his text by saying this isn't about Facebook or politics. <laughs> Fuck you, because the only time we've ever had fights were the exact same days that we had fucking fights, you know, on Facebook. So number one, that's a lie. So he said, you know, the everybody else wants you off the network, and I'm thinking everybody else. He doesn't know me and Richie have been everybody talking. everybody else? Yeah, we've been talking <laughs> for the last couple months. Richie has told me all the shit that John's been talking about me to him. Uh, so the other people are Stan, his fucking dad, which obviously I've been in a fight with. Uh, Paul James Caden, Stan's fucking best friend, uh, who's a fucking liberal scientist and all that shit, too. Uh, <laughs> what, R- Christopher? Is he fucking, was, is, he don't, is he not like me either? <laughs> like, and then Sonny who does the, the female does the impact show who no, I, I, I like as a person, but her show fucking I'll say, her I, show. I just always thought that was John using a voice modulator and pretending <laughs> to be a girl. No, I didn't think, I didn't know that was, well, actual, I didn't know I, that was an actual person. I've actually met her. So yeah, yeah, I mean, I could, I could see where you can make that, that correlation, but no. So yeah, well, she, apparently she, they met through Vampiro. They did. Ah, oh. they did. Yeah. She's from uh, the mean streets of Thunder Bay, Ontario, just like Vampiro is. And uh, I, I, side note, Fania, uh, we tried to warn you about Vampiro, brother. Oh, it uh, doesn't bother. No, I mean, uh, <laughs> like we still, he can come back and do a show anytime he wants. Like, yeah. I said on my show, and I said to these guys before, I was like, dude, if he does five episodes, I really don't care because right. as yeah. soon as he started a show, I had us locked in for a blue chew at. So I got paid off, and so did he. Well, that's I good. Decided that's he wanted to do other things, and I was just like, we just we knew he was so flighty with our dealings yeah. with him, with Vampiro's rituals and all that, and the fact that he dropped his fucking gig. I know we're getting off on a side note here, but. He dropped his gig in Vegas where he had a, a residency and a, and a wrestling approach in there yeah, yeah. for this shit on YouTube that he got sold a, a bill of goods, I guess, supposedly by Mike Tyson's team uh, and then stopped doing our podcast. And then as soon as he started doing one with you, uh, me and John were like, That's who knows how much of that is true, though? Yeah, a lot yeah. of that was based off of John's dealing with him. We knew the shit wouldn't last because Vampiro is so fucking all over the place. Yeah, but he just can't concentrate on one thing at a time. So it is. I do consider it a disappointment and a failure, though, because John got like five or six episodes out of him, and I only got two. I was like, I just want to <laughs> right. <beat> six. Trust <laughs> me, he, he was he was happy about that. Trust me, he, yeah, he fucking reveled in that shit. Yeah, so. yeah, 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 I did. I'm not surprised. I, I heard it from everyone, Conan and, and Disco included. Like, yeah, it's yeah. Lake, and I'm like, well, we'll see what happens. I, I don't take it personal. It's I don't consider it like a big deal. He just did a couple episodes and then decided he went to do other things, and we left it like, hey, if you want to come back. The guy's a free spirit, man. Yeah. <laughs> no, he is. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a nice way to put it. So, Mike, to answer your question, man, like John Wayne was a fucking cocksucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you think that uh, he's ever actually sucked a cock? It's like that old saying of like, if it looks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, then it's probably sucked someone's dick. <laughs> like, uh, oh, I don't know, there, man, and he he gets all like giddy there, man, and he talks about their bodies there, man, and Let it's like I don't know if he's ever. You, you do a great John Wangland. Yeah, that, that was that was man. spot on, man. That I just want to know what happened to his eyebrows. If anyone could help me out and tell me what he's done to his face and his eyebrows, I would love to know. I, I, it's funny the way uh, Richie mentioned about John messing with the algorithm. Because uh, I was saying the other day, he's so against letting anything grow naturally that he dyes his yeah. beard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's true. And you know what? Like, I'll, I'll, I'll say this, too. He, uh, <laughs> he had me join a couple of private message Twitter groups that just all they do is fucking like retweet yeah. each other's tweet. It's the same fucking 15 people that retweet each other's goddamn tweets. It's tweet a farming group. Yeah. It is. Yeah. So that's... Share that's, a show. Yeah, that's a modern, lot of stuff that he does, family. Too. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Oh, I was just going to say, I just wanted the point to be made here that we left on the basic principle of, I don't care if I don't draw, I don't care if 10 people listen or 100 people listen or 1,000 people listen. I want to earn the fucking listens. I don't, I don't right. want to sit there and, and have the shit not grow naturally and act like we're having some fantasy land that we're successful. I don't need to sit here and swing my dick all day long and, and act like I'm something I'm not. And uh, that's, that's kind of the, the basic premise of why I left. 
Yeah. So I, Rob, I get, Rob, Rob's battle was over kind of politics and Facebook things. And then Richie, yours is more of the uh, pulling the curtain back and having the truth be exposed. Uh, but you both asked to yeah. leave or was, um, was it the other way around? Uh, well, I mean, if you ask John, he kicked me out. But I mean, I was ready. You know, we were ready to leave yeah. okay. anyway. So basically, the reason was, you know, a, an, another reason why I left was, uh, you know, him and Rob had been pretty good buddies for a while. And uh, I saw a pattern of John's of him going from friend to friend as like a shiny new penny type thing. And the way he treated Rob, uh, you know, I, I basically saw foreshadowing that he was going to do the same to me. Obviously, if, if somebody means something to you, you don't kick him out the way he did Rob. So that was kind of my thing. You know, I saw that coming my direction and I wasn't going to let him do the shit that he did Rob to me. Okay. So we got both of your guys side of the story. Now, uh, noted truth teller, Christopher Martin, a guy that's never yeah. told a lie or, or had any kind of deception, oh, Jesus. never started a fake, uh, GoFundMe for a fake injury for a fake surgery, never done anything dishonest mm-hmm. like that. Uh, he said on his most current show, he had a, a different take, and I'm going to play that for you guys right now. And then we'll listen to it, and then we'll dissect his uh, truthful words. Me and John, we just dealt with uh, John fired uh, two people off of his network, uh, which is which, which, by the way, is the Reality Check Podcasting Network, which, which that's the network that my show is on right now. Um, thank you, John, for that, by the way. Uh, and we had to fire them because they got their heads so full of, of, uh, delusions of grandeur that they thought that they were bigger than what they were. So, so John had to put them within their place and said, you can either straighten up or you're not going to have a show. Quite frankly, we got moved to a bigger network and a broader platform it's either art 14 or 17 something like that and they didn't even want one of these shows to come over because they didn't draw diddly squat but john stuck his neck out and still brought this person on and they were still acting like a complete stuck up ignorant Big-headed jackass. Uh, I'd like to know what exactly was John Wanglin's uh, idea of starting a motivational podcast from a guy who deals with depression. Oh, God. Uh, he, he goes on and he talks about his wife's medical issues. And he's a, a, he's a, his, I'm saying his back injury is fake, by the way. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I, I, oh, and, I, and the fact is that there's something You can't wrong. work at Walmart and be technically disabled. And, and and fucking have a back injury like that. Yeah, he had he had back surgery allegedly and two days later was fucking at the beach. Just like this is the <laughs> toughest guy alive. Oh and, and Mick Foley paid for the Oh rest Mick of his Mick surgery. Foley paid. Yeah. Oh that's Mick that Foley was the wrestler because he, he and Vince Russo it. recommended it. Yeah. Oh uh, l- 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 we'll, we'll, we'll get to we'll get to Martin in a second, but uh okay, after sorry. hearing that, Rob <laughs> go ahead, Rob. Rob, he said fired was the word he used. So All go right. ahead. Let, let, let me t- 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 tell you ab- about, about, about that stupid son of a bitch. Look, we weren't fucking fired. We were going to leave. Any- if John wants to say he fired me, that's fine. But Richie was the one that came with me because he saw the bullshit that was going on. He knew John was playing both sides. And for stupid fuck Christopher Martin to say that, I, I, I didn't hear that. I'm, I'm glad you played that, Mike, because I, I don't listen to that show because it's fucking horrible and it's yeah. dreadful and I don't have an hour and a half to listen to him fucking talk about stupid shit all the time. So let's just throw that out there right now. And and I don't know what show he was talking about that I didn't want to come on there. It might have been his show because I've been trying to tell John to get rid of him for fucking months now and John kept beating around the bush and saying, yeah, you wouldn't believe the amount of shit. Oh my god! That I have in text messages that I could fucking release to show John talking shit about Christopher Martin, and I hope he's listening right now. Your fucking supposed best friend Christopher wanted to get rid of you for months, but he felt bad. He took you on as a fucking charity case. And those are his exact words. You are a fucking charity case, and he felt bad for you because of your supposed disability uh, and your 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 speech impediments. So 
let's just he's throw the that one that found out the story that that fucking chris said about russo and mick foley and all that john did the research and found out he was lying uh, look <laughs> it, it's a fucking joke that you know richie and i got fired from the network and we're so full of shit and all that we we have so much uh, on John Wangland that that we're releasing on our own show. Uh, it, it'll probably come out before this one. It will. Uh, so if you want the full story about that, definitely check out the Rad Turtles Wrestling Podcast about the truth of why we left the, the Rally Check Podcast Network well, in, with, with, in detail. So Without a doubt, uh, those guys are going to be listening. But I would, caution, I would say uh, have some caution about what you say and whatever and watch yourself because as we know, the Reality Check legal team could oh at any God. point could at any point sue every last one of you motherfuckers that's true yeah. I, mean, I kept yeah. telling him when he said that yeah. to you guys i'm like bro who are you trying to fool like come on now <laughs> well, <laughs> fucking we, drop we, the shit bro we know he sent mike and joe a cease and desist he did. so that he wrote himself yeah. and he's, he's also gonna... a lawyer by the way with his 12 degrees <laughs> he's, well, a very, just... he's a very smart man he's very I, well uh... versed i got wrapped up in a lot of the stuff between you, Joe, and Husey, and Mike, because of John. You know, because we were best friends uh, and partners. It's a loyalty thing. Yeah, it's a, it's a loyalty thing, and I believed everything that he told me. And I want to publicly say right now, and I don't have to do this, but I'm going to do this because that's what you do when you're in the wrong. I apologize to you, Joe Feeney, Adam Hughes, and Mike Durban for getting involved in all that shit with John, for fighting with you guys publicly on Facebook and Twitter and and private messages and all the bullshit. I apologize for my end on that because I was sold a fucking shitty bill of goods by John Wangland and I was just, I was sticking up for him. So I apologize to you guys for my part in the whole fight that we've had over the last fucking six, eight months or whatever. And the same from me to you. The only thing that I, that ever uh, bothered me about any of it really was that fucking video that came out that was, and, and everyone knows what happened. It's so fucking obvious that, Husey called John as a joke on that Skype call when we were doing the Die Hard watch along. Psycho John must have watched three hours of a Skype call, which is a little unhinged to begin with. Mm -hmm. And then he took some quotes out that was just us quoting the movie saying fucking or whatever. The, 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 what does he say about the, the Saudis or something? I don't remember. Whatever's from Die Hard. And, uh, and then tried to make it like a big, hey, these guys are racist, whatever. To me, there's a big difference between fucking with someone and saying, your numbers are probably fraudulent and uh, what happened to your show with Severn or whatever the fuck. And then actually trying to cause someone to lose money and, and, and be <clears throat> branded a racist in 2019. It's, it's yeah. that he would, is too fucking far. And that's when I, I was like, that's brutal. He yeah. was obsessed with ruining you guys because of the heat that you guys had and stemmed all the way back from him, leaving creative control back in the beginning. Yeah. So he took that call. He played it to me. He said, hey, chop this up, put it in a video, and let's ruin these fuckers. <laughs> and I was complicit with that. So I, I, I apologize for that as well. It didn't work. And then it really, like, looking at the comments, there were certain people that used to support his shows and stuff that were going, come on, man. What the fuck, it's man? Transparent yeah. And, and it's, it's way too far. And I know I've said this before, but, dude, when he left, it, it couldn't it wasn't a problem i didn't care and, and i've said this before but in fact like he called me when he was going to start reality check and he was like i need i need a little help on knowing where to 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 upload the shows what do you think i should do where should i go how do you get sponsors i pointed him in the direction of a couple of ad agencies and all that shit how much do you charge guys to put shows up i told him that of course as soon as he started the network i stopped charging everyone just so i could say that but i mean <laughs> it, there was never there was never heat there was Twitter fuck offs. In fact, he was on Creative Control after the network was around your guys' network for for three four months or whatever. Yeah. So whatever heat he had from leaving or he made up in his head that that I had a problem with him leaving, it wasn't the case at all. I it was totally like, good luck. I don't give a shit really. So yeah. What about uh? Did he actually have Don Fry confirmed before he announced that show? He did, but Don had some medical stuff that he's going through and had some surgeries done, so he wasn't able to ever really get on a show. I guess they did one show. We we know that Vamp is Vamp, and, and right. Yeah, I think he said some things on his YouTube or something about how he just didn't trust John. And actually, he told me that when we right. were on the show, he's like, he I don't think he knew my connection to John, so he was just speaking freely to me. He's no, like, he didn't know. Yeah, he's like, yeah, you know, I just didn't trust the last guy that was doing it or something, and I never dug deeper because I don't. I wasn't looking for gossip. I was, I was literally, let's do a show. This, this could work. 
but that's what he would tell me. I didn't trust the guy or something like that. I said, well, you know, everything's above board with me and I'll show you whatever you need to see and numbers and, and, and ad revenue, whatever. And it still didn't work, but that's not, you know, so, but with, uh, with Severn, it just didn't happen. Is that, what was the case? Because because there was all kinds of stuff with Severn that I know he was saying on podcasts, like he was going to promote fights with him and then all this shit. And it was all running running off at the mouth. But then that show, it did. It lasted, what, like one or two shows? I think they had, I don't know, maybe four or five shows. But he he said that Dan was so busy. And Dan is. Dan's all over the place. He's all over the world. Yeah. Uh, he goes to Japan right. quite a lot. You know, he said Dan didn't have the time to put into the show every week. And John wanted somebody that could commit to it weekly so they could do a Patreon and all that and put out extra content. And in John's defense, you know, Dan just didn't have, have the time for that. Uh, as far as, Vamp, as yeah. far as Vamp goes, Vamp, as you know, is all over the place as well. Uh, and mostly mentally. He just, he, he can't stick to one thing at a time. He's all, you know, he's all over the place. Um, I started Vamp's Patreon with John. I was putting out, you know, extra shows, extra content and stuff like that. They had several people signed up for it. <clears throat> and when Vamp said that he wasn't going to do the podcast anymore, in defense of John, I'm, I, I like, I'll tell the truth. I'll call it the way it is no matter what. I'm not going to bullshit anybody. I'm 44 years old. I have no reason to fucking lie to anybody. John refunded everybody's Patreon out of pocket. Everyone that signed I up was one of them. And, and it canceled. Richie was one of them. John, and regardless of what Van or anybody else says, John did refund all that money. Uh, but yeah, and, you know, yeah. he had the chance to work with Dan again. And I even asked him, I said, you know, Dan's schedule's freeing up with the pandemic and all that. Do you want to get him, you know, get back on the show? And he's like, nah, fuck that, blah, blah, blah. And he just kept making excuses for it. So a lot of it has to do with Dan's schedule. Uh, but then a lot of it has to do with John just digging in his heels and, and just stuck in his fucking ways and not wanting to, uh, you know, to change. You know, the, the more and more that I sit back and, and look at everything that transpired uh, and I see, you know, he John always passes the buck, always tries to blame on somebody else. I'm the reason why I lost Jeff Johnson and all these other fucking co-hosts. Dude, Dean Galloway, the Aussie guy, Fat Coon. You guys know Fat Coon, right? Yeah. John thought he was behind, you know, maybe the illumination or maybe he was, you know, a fucking burner account. He was feeding information to, to Joe. He was a fucking mole. John sold me another bill of fucking goods on Dean and said, you need to get rid of him. Like this guy's a fucking cancer. You know, he's, he's, he's a fucking mole. He's given Joe all this info. Uh, you know, you need to get rid of him. And, and Dean and I were friends and we've since rectified that after all this came up. I again, messaged Dean and said, look, man, this is the real truth about what happened. John fucking told me to get rid of you. And it sucks because I really liked you as a friend. So we've buried the hatchet there. But, you know, it's just another reason, like, at, at some point, when you look back at everything that transpired, the, no, the common fucking denominator is Johnny Podcasting. Is John. <laughs> That's the truth. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but um, I, I, th- I think he's had this obsession with Vince Russo beyond fandom, where I think it's yeah. a, a literal love. <laughs> but, like, if you look at the, yeah. the brand shows, there's the, the bro show which uh, Wangdon has tried to copy off with the show with his dad. There's the inspirational show that Russo does, which nobody fucking listens to, <laughs> uh, which uh, Wangdon does as well. Uh, who the fuck's going to take advice from him? There's the wrestling yeah. ones. I assume there's going to be a, a black guy coming on soon to do a, a, some black, big nose Italian will be fucking be on the yeah. show soon, you know? Well, right. one thing that I told him way in the beginning... And uh, was as soon as he came bored with me, then all of a sudden he was on YouTube and whatever, trying to start a feud with Meltzer and Alvarez. And I'm like, this fucking looks <laughs> yeah. stupid. But I didn't say anything. All right, do your own thing. And then shortly after that, he was talking shit about Russo. And I told him many times, I said, this is not the way. I understand you think, you know, controversy is the way to go and feuds is what people, I was like, dude, it's just going to give you a bad reputation and people are going to get turned off. But he knew, he knew better, you know. And as you can see, he talked all that shit on Vince. And I'm not, I don't even, like, I know Vince. We're not tight. I get him for the shows or whatever. He did my shows back in the day. He sent me condolences when my mom died. Like, he's a good guy as far as I'm concerned. So yes. when John was saying all that shit on his one video, like calling him a crook and fucking fake, fake religion and all this shit, I was like, man, that is so far beyond 
like anything you should be saying about that's someone brutal, you don't even know. And, I, and, I, and that's when I said something on, on Twitter about it. But as you can see, now the circles come around and now he wants to kiss back up to Vince. Like, dude, you can't unring that bell. And Jeff yep. Lane ain't going to forget. He knows who the fuck you are and he knows what you said. So that's why I tried to advise him back yeah. then. Like, this is not the way to go, dude. D- despite whatever numbers the cash rate and the bros thing did, that, that was good for one or two shows, maybe getting a few numbers. But it wasn't worth it in the long run. And that's all I was ever trying to tell him. Like, you're, you're hurting yourself. Right by doing dumb shit like that. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I always I, told John, I said, look, man, we, we, we need to fucking stick to what we're doing and, and the projects that we're looking at doing. You can't, you can't uh, sell this to your crowd all the constant time of, of attacking people and, and expecting that to gain traction. It's not going to work. And uh, he would always revert back to it. And I'd have to tell him, man, knock this shit off. It's not the kind of crowd I want to attract. And, uh, you know, he, that's just his, his MO, man. That's what he likes to get into. He's always doing hot button topics. Like anything that he he posts is, is like a social thing that's going on, or, or the the story of the fucking day. And he aligns himself with Brad Shepard, who I, look, Brad's a friend of mine, but we all know Brad likes to stir the fucking shit on Twitter. And you know, he even defended JD from NY, who I think is a fucking piece of shit. That's just my yeah. opinion. Yeah, but John, see, John thinks it's fucking cool to be cutting edge and to be you know to be you know like guys like that. And that's who he's trying to be now. You know, he, he's a closet he's, SJW. He's against bullying, and he told me how bullying is a bunch of bullshit. But then, yeah, he is—he's a fucking—he's a bully, and he's an SJW. He's—he's he's, <laughs> fucking guy is a—he's the real anomaly. They call me the anomaly. He's—he's he's the real fucking anomaly for sure, man. That that guy, uh, he's Jekyll and Hyde. He's the Donald Trump of podcasting because you're not allowed to think differently. Ooh, he ain't and, like that. Oh, like Jesus it. Christ! Yeah, and he's got a stupid <laughs> voice with bad hair. Yeah. <laughs> I want to take it back to Christopher Martin. I knew from the very start this this it didn't smell right. You know, something was up. I could tell from the very start over a year ago that this story just didn't make any sense. You know, Russo did the painting. Uh, he had him on Twitch one night and uh, he got the story out. You know, Kuhn, to his credit, Kuhn donated, I think, 100 bucks. Uh, everybody else donated a little bit, but it all added up and it, I think it stopped around 800 and it, it stayed there for a while, for months. And then all of a sudden he posted that he got the remaining money, which led him to the $3,000 mark that he was trying to hit. Now you're telling me that Mick Foley. Was involved. No, in it was twenty thousand. It was twenty thousand. I thought it was three thousand to get no. the insurance started. No, no, nope, twenty thousand. So Mick Foley donated twenty thousand. That's what he told yeah. us. Yeah, and not to mention, I just want to pull a curtain back too. Uh, I just wanted to say he's an ungrateful fuck because uh, you know John Wangland and I got together and uh, we paid for his kids' Christmas this past year. So this is the thanks I get. Mm. No, that's true. They did. Mm. Yeah. And that's yeah. where I started my battle with him. Um, you know, John did message me also right before Christmas. He said, Mike, uh, would you consider donating money so we can get Chris's kids some presents? Chris is distraught. He can't afford any presents this year. And I'm like, dude, are you kidding me? Like, this guy yeah. is a fucking charlatan. No, I'm not giving you any money. And then, um, then the next day, I think Chris posted on Twitter, does anybody have any recommendations which wrestling twi- uh, Patreons I can join? Uh, mm-hmm. you know, and, I, and I called him out on it, and then he just went off on me. The next thing you know, I'm at my work party uh, Friday before Christmas, and I'm getting all these DMs from Martin. I'm going to kill myself, and it's because of you. You know, I'm going to tell my wife that you were responsible. You're going to be liable in court for my death. And he's going on. I could send you guys. Like, I have he's not. pages of fucking messages from him. I'm like, dude, I shut the it. fuck up. And yeah. then he denied all that. Like he said that, that that I was making it up. I'm like, dude, don't try and deny He's a fucking nut. Yeah. The, the perfect nut guy to have to host a motivational podcast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I you know, I didn't I'm not giving money for Christmas. And then, you know, all of a sudden in the months since then, he's just doing all these bragging, like, oh, we got a new Volkswagen. Um, you know, I joined this Patreon, I bought this t shirt, I got this killer cross t shirt. I'm taking my kids to the water park. I'm going yeah. here. Congratulations. Yep. All you assholes that paid for his GoFundMe, you just paid for all that shit. So hope you guys are happy yeah. with your money well spent. Yeah, I mean, it's like mm-hmm. every day he's posting something that he spent money on. And then last week, he's crying, oh, please pray for me. My family's going through a tough time and we don't know what's next. And then um, someone said that he can't afford to live where he wants to live on the beach or something. 
and now he's moving. You know, oh, dude, no. the, it's like everything he says from one week to the next is a fucking it's like a bad episode of South Park, bro. Yeah. Can anyone here afford to live on the beach? It sounds pretty. I like yeah. to live on the fucking beach. My wife would love to live on the beach. The crisis. Yeah. But the, one of the things about Chris Moore, I I think he's going to move in with John. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. Uh, the dude says he can't even bathe himself, and then he said he needs his wife to bathe him on a video. And yeah. it's like, bro, you're walking around right now just fine. Like you're lifting shit at Walmart. And, you're, and you're he, working. And he does like hour What's long. You? He does like hour long live streams where he's fucking like walking and shit. All right, but you have a debilitating back injury. Get yeah. the fuck out. He's of like here a TV preacher. And then he said last week he slipped on the sidewalk and he hit his he fractured his tailbone or something. I'm like, dude, if you slipped oh, and boy. fell a month after having back and spine surgery, you'd be in the fucking ER, dude. You couldn't walk. We wouldn't be that lucky, bro. We yeah. wouldn't be that lucky. And another thing about the surgery, it's like I think in February he said, Oh yeah, it's at the end of March. Didn't say a word about it again. And all of a sudden somebody asked him on Twitter and then he said it was, Oh, it's next Thursday. Then this is a guy that loves sympathy. He loves to make video, live videos and yeah. tweets. You never saw a picture of him in a hospital gown. You know, nope. if this was real, nope. he would have been live streaming from the fucking hospital bed. No I, 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 oh, send everybody. Please, 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 please send me your prayers and hopes and all this. You didn't <laughs> see any of that. Yeah, dude, it didn't happen. Why are you continuing the lie, man? We all, everybody knows it's fake. Yeah. yeah. Do you think that? Uh, Wangland actually believes Martin's lies, or does he just go along? No, he he's told us that he hasn't. No, yeah. he he knows he's a he knows he's a fucking lying fuck. He tells us he told us all the time. Uh, he was waiting to kick him off, and he kept saying, "This is the weekend I'm going to do it. This is the weekend I'm going to do it." And we're like, "Well, John, we don't want this fucking asshole tied to us. We don't want that to be our reputation. So get the fuck rid of him. This is your responsibility. You're the leader. Fucking do it." Okay. And you kept calling us and texting us, telling us how bad fucking Chris was and all this bullshit. But he would never fucking have the balls to do it. And he kept saying, well, my dad told me, you know, what would Jesus do? And all these different explanations and shit like that. And it's like, bro, if, no, but if he you're going to sit off. here but he can and kick talk me shit off, about right? a, yeah. a, a top earner on his right. fucking and if network, you're sit right? Here, well, and, and the fact is, is, is Chris, this is John's ass. And John likes that. He likes a group of people that he surrounds himself with that follow him. And he's a really good deceiver in making you feel like, He's the victim of all the past shit he's gone through. Yeah. The fact is, once you see through the bullshit, you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. The guy's a fucking con artist, and that's just how it is. Does John Wangland take drugs? He did in the past, and, you know, actually, it's funny you mention that, Adam, because talking to recently, he asked me, he said he's watching Fig Life, and he said John was, you know, real shaky and moving all over the place and scratching his face and doing this and that, and I... I hadn't watched the videos in a while, so I, you know, I since I got mad at John and and um, I went back and watched it. I'm like, yeah, you know, like he's right. Like John seems really off. I'm not gonna speculate, but I will say, based on my observation, it's quite possible that that would explain a lot of his erratic behavior lately. If he was, it's just it's, I remember. I think this was around Christmas time. Uh, Feeney recorded a like a round table episode for. Uh, whatever the fuck his podcast is called. I don't listen. <laughs> and uh, Wangden came on and he looked fucked up. Like his pupils were dilated and his face was twitching and stuff like this. And, and from experience, it's like, no, he's on. Like You don't get that from dipping a cookie into two different types of milk. Uh, mm -hmm. He looked like he was on <laughs> a, a strong, let's just say, something went up the nose, maybe some type of pill. But uh, I thought that that was crazy. And then if you look at, go look at the live stream, I, I can do a physical impression because we're on camera, uh, of the live stream of uh, the In Your House thing. John's sitting like this the whole time. like, <laughs> And he's shaking Jesus. and he keeps being, And he's got this weird smile, but his face is like, hey there, man, uh, In Your House and Karen Cross there, man. He's going to have the titles there, man. Oh. And it's like, you, you need to calm down. Good. You did that well. No, that like, was very good. That was very good. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't know if he is or not, but it would explain quite a bit of what's been going on lately. And the fact that two different people have said that to me now, it, it, it obviously did not have conversations with each other. It, maybe there's a little bit of truth to, uh, to that. Yeah. I've got a question for Richie. Uh, yeah. When you first met John, <clears throat> did he start 
name dropping and saying that he knew all these industry types because uh, on a on the, uh, that same recording that with Joe Feeney, John Wangland said that he knows Kit Harrington. Yeah, that was great. And that they were going to that's John Snow from the Game of Thrones. <laughs> And he said they were going to do a Game wow. of Thrones podcast. And I think that's actually wow. on the episode that was released. Yeah, yeah, that's that's something. Yeah, I, I think you just answered your own question, man. Uh, you know, <laughs> when I met John, it was it was through <laughs> it was through the Vampiro podcast. And, and that's kind of how we got the ball rolling and started talking. And uh, when Vamp left him um, and then I guess his feed got deleted or some damn thing. I don't know if that's even true. Or whatever, but uh, he basically said, "Hey, man, you want to come on for an episode?" Since you know the Patreon fell through, you didn't get to do the the one on one chat with Vampiro like we promised. If you'd like to come on to a wrestling show with me, I'd love to have you for an episode. I said, "Sure, man." So uh, we did a show, and you know he liked it. He liked the way that we communicated together, and and it was a good flow. And so he brought me on, and and the rest is history on that. As far as him dropping names, uh, the only names he dropped to me were Dan Severn. Uh, and then, of course, I saw the Vampiro thing. And then he said in the future he wanted to get, you know, indie wrestling talent on and stuff like that. So that's that's really all he told me. He name dropped to me Stephen Amell. He, he, he was in <laughs> touch with Stephen Amell's uh, agent or whatever. And as soon as he wrapped up this season, you know, the past the last season of Arrow and all that, that he was going to get. He told me for months and months and months and months and months that Stephen Amell wanted to come on, uh, you know, wrestling with reality or whatever and do a show. But obviously that that never happened. So the split happened. Uh, you guys, Richie and Rob, you decided to form the R and R Podcasting Network. Yep. That's correct. Rob, how many shows are you bringing over? Are you still going to do more than one show on on the network? Uh, we brought over Rad Turtles uh, Wrestling Podcast and Wrestling Anonymous, and uh, Richie's also going to be launching a political show uh, called Freedom of Fear. Okay. Uh, so that we brought on so in. We'll probably stick with that for now, just based on that's all we have time for with everything else we got going on. But uh, eventually we are looking to expand uh, if anybody's interested in bringing on more shows. But uh, we're, we're going to focus right now on, on our shows that we, we currently have. Okay, so are you doing your flagship? And then what about the new Rewind? Uh, our TW Rewind actually uh, drops Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, I, I put out several shows. I've been blessed to interview guys like Tracy Smothers, uh, Nikita Koloff. Um, I had uh, Big Vito on. We all know who Big Vito is. He's a yeah. super, super nice guy. I've had uh, Scott Stanford on my show, host from WWE. So, uh, yeah, I, I've, I've had a lot of good feedback from that show. Uh, and we're, we're doing really well with that. So that's, that's kind of my, my passion project right now. And then, obviously, our, our flagship show drops on Saturday. That's the original concept show that I started with where I – give my thoughts on the current shows of wrestling for the week, go through current news and all that. And then Richie to his credit with wrestling anonymous who they haven't, you know, he, he did that show with John, uh, just bringing that over, uh, based on the old episodes that he did. Uh, he's getting some really good numbers and haven't put out a show in over a month or so. So it, it shows that that show is still a pretty decent draw. And he did a lot of the dark side of the ring stuff and all that. So that's kind of the, the initial premise of that show was to be like a, a dark side of the ring type show yeah, uh, and, and break down controversial subjects and stuff like that. So that's getting some pretty good uh, hits right now, which has been pretty, has been dormant for over a month. So if that just proves that the, the drawing power that we had and how fucking short sighted John Wangland is for, uh, for wanting us off his network and to keep the current shows that he has that, that are over in fucking South Africa and <laughs> fucking wherever else he's Brazil. Was. Brazil. I'd, like see, I'd like to see Wrestling Anonymous tackle uh, the career of Sonny, and then cool. the big the big uh, climax at the end would be a review of her OnlyFans. Ah, there you go. Yeah, that would that would be great, man. I'd love to do that. Thanks for <laughs> I that would idea. I would happily do a watch along of her sex tip. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> I don't. <that's, laughs> you need to do that. That's uh, yeah, I think I think Conrad already did that, right? And if you want to do a page special, <laughs> believe me, I have done a You'll lot of in, research. Huh? <laughs> now, Richie, go. Richie, who is getting <laughs> custody of Fig Life? Did you lose that in the in the divorce battle? So, so John uh, renamed the channel. If you guys had saw, yeah. to, uh, wrestling. That. Yeah, it's wrestling with reality now. 
and all his farm views and shit are still on there. I went on personally, and so I, he's I'm got sure he two wrestling with reality feet. He yeah. dropped his what yeah. a fucking ass. what an asshole. That shows you right there. What a fucking douchebag. I would say though that if he indeed has been paying for downloads and investing money, I of course he's going to continue to use it because he threw all that money. Right. Away. Yeah, Absolutely. Hundred percent. That's what I was going to say. Is is that and. uh Jesus Christ, man! I tried watching that that uh, watch along with the NXT in your house. It was fucking garbage. That, that fucking guy he was doing the show with kept stuttering, and the audio was bad and all that stuff. I was just like, Jesus, hey man! And as always, joining me on is my partner, my cohort, my good buddy. He is the simple man, Jeff Miller. What is up, Mister Miller? Uh, not much. Just here, excited to sit down and chat with you. Been a wonderful day here. It's been a joyous day. You've had an eventful day, haven't you? Yeah. I'm ready for it to be over. <laughs> yeah. The good news is there's always a new day that's coming, right? Yeah, hopefully a better one. Yeah, that, that guy, Jeff Miller, he sounds like Kip from Napoleon Dynamite. Napoleon, don't be jealous that I've been chatting online with babes all day. Besides, we both know I'm training to become a cage fighter. Yeah, he does. He yeah. Is the, yeah. Of all people to choose to co-host a show with, man. And he kicked him off for me. Like yeah. he kicked him and his other partner. He talked shit, talk shit about him too. Yeah, he talked shit about Miller too, and they've been friends for years. They both the, live near each other in New York. And the uh, simple man. He is the simple man. Yeah, a funny, mm -hmm. funny story. <laughs> you want to talk about, yeah, you want to talk about farming views? I, I, I wasn't going to bring this up, but I had a big spike in my numbers a couple weeks ago. Uh, on Memorial Day and the day after, where for about an hour period, um, my numbers spiked like tremendously. Because and, and I watch it all the time just to see what I'm doing, just so I can stay ahead of things. And the dumbass knows I can see the fucking geographics. I can see the fucking demographics, right? Yeah. So I look at where the downloads were coming from, and they all came from <laughs> New York, which is the area that John lives in in upstate New York. And then you confronted him about it. So I confronted him about it. And I'm like, John, for two days in a row now, my numbers fucking spiked. And then went back to fucking to what I normally get. Right. And I can see that all these fucking downloads came from your area. What mm -hmm. the fuck? And he's like, oh, well, you know, my people in, in this area are loyal. And, you know, I must have. <laughs> I must have posted it. Uh, yeah, my people. I must he's have, an ordained minister, didn't you yeah. know? Yeah, I must have posted out, you know, your show on my Facebook and blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, you got a bunch of downloads. So that's that's really awesome, right? And I'm like, number one, no, because I combed your fucking timeline, dude. And you didn't post a single thing about you haven't posted a single thing about my show since you got pissed off at me back in fucking February. Yeah. So that's a fucking that's a lie right there. And he's like, well, I right. don't know. It's just weird. You know, maybe just sometimes he had a spike. He just kept fucking trying to explain it away. and That it was a bigger platform and all this bullshit. That's what really, that's when I knew I'm like, all right, I, I got to I gotta fucking go because this guy is just so full of shit. So there's yeah. another reason of how John is a, is a, is a fucking liar. Hey, was, uh, NASCAR video it now has nearly 3,000 views despite <laughs> having it yesterday. <laughs> uh, Richie, are you going to continue to talk about uh, wrestling action figures on your shows going forward? Because, I mean, you're obviously a huge fan. You guys did so many shows. I know both of you guys were – every week it seemed like you guys were getting more and more figures in. Yeah. So that's a, we were, uh, that's a big passion for you. Are you going to continue yeah. going down that road? I don't know, man. Uh, for now, because I got such a sour taste in my mouth with the fucking, you know, the the fake views and shit like that, I, I don't really know if I'm going to do a YouTube channel. I think I'm going to stick to my hobby of just podcasting right now. But, I, you know, maybe in the future, something like that. I don't know. Yeah. All right, Richie, I want you to close your eyes for a second. <laughs> okay. And I want you to listen and... Um... I want you to tell us how you feel after. Do I got to close my eyes because I feel fucking weird right now. <laughs> close your eyes. Close your eyes. Listen to the words here. Ready? When you're with the Fig World Order, Richie, what are they, man? Four life. life. Richie, how do you feel after hearing that? Man, it sucks, honestly, because, uh, you know, that was a passionate project that we, we were just going to have fun. And uh, John made it all about money and, and views and all that kind of shit. So it sucks. It's a squandered opportunity to have fun. And the ironic thing is, if he's using uh, click farms, if he tries to monetize that channel, YouTube will shut him down 
like delete his account overnight. Like they don't fuck yeah. around. Well, and the thing is, bro, like honestly, that that was kind of my idea was too uh, for leaving was I if he got caught doing that stuff, I didn't want that to be on my reputation. I didn't want that to screw up my hobby of doing this stuff and, and people yeah. look at me wrong or a certain way. Uh, so that's kind of why I, you know, I called him out on his farming shit with the YouTube channel. It's, there's no possible way to go from a couple hundred views to four to 5,000 consistently the same numbers every single video overnight. Mm-hmm. Just, you, no YouTube is very hard to break into. We all know oh, yeah. that. We're, we're yeah. all on YouTube. So it's yeah. very, there's so much content out there. It's very, very hard. And, and, and how, for him to say he's a master of the fucking algorithms and he studies yeah. all this shit and blah, blah, blah. That, that, that's, that's a bunch of bullshit. And, and to go back with the spike in my numbers on Art19, if they ever fucking found out that that came from one IP address, he's fucking gone. And he just, he's gone. He, he fucked it up for everybody else. Yep. Yeah. And he yeah. didn't care about that. No, he didn't give a shit. Well, I think then, you guys are, are better off because I said uh, a while ago, I think I said it on that uh, brand on the brand Facebook group, the discussion that I know was, was screenshot and shared and all that was that his best bet at that time, because there had been so much negativity towards him, and especially after that video was released and all that, that his best bet was to fucking shut down, come back later with a new name and shit. So I think you guys starting a, a network and taking your names out from under that umbrella is the best thing for both of you, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah and plus, if, if you're linked with the grapplers, which I hate to say it because I don't like to give out compliments, but they're they're going to blow the fuck up because that show is hilarious. Yeah, I mean, we're, you know, they want me to do a show on, on their network. We're in negotiations for that. There's no plans to bring any of their stuff on ours, but uh, we want to keep our show separately. But we're going to have a, a good synergy between our brand and their brand and we can cross promote and get our names out there and, you know, this, I, I posted on Twitter as well. I said, you know, follow our, you know, our friends on this creative control network as well. I, you know, it's, it's good to have friends and to be net, you know, to network with people and use cross promotion to help each other out because that's what it's really all about in the long run. And that, that kind of got lost in the way when all this whole thing started, yeah. you know, we thought we were going to have a nice synergy between the reality <laughs> check and creative control. And obviously John had a, a different vision of where, where things actually end up, uh, end up going. The away. video totally killed any hope for that ever in the future. But what really started to turn the tide was when we were just fucking off on Twitter. And then uh, the, the, the whatever he's supposed to be, a counselor with multiple degrees and stuff. And he's supposed to be an expert on... 24 mental, years of schooling. Yeah, an <laughs> expert on mental illness and all this comes out. And he's like, this guy's fucking nuts. He's bipolar. Take your medicine and shit. And, and mm-hmm. I was like, wow, that's yeah. really shitty and personal. He, he has the most ironically titled podcast ever where he is clearly wrestling with reality. I mean, yeah. And yeah, he needs right. a reality check for real. Like he's, he's too old to be doing this sort of huge stuff. It's not really wrestling. Wrestling with <laughs> anonymity. That was my favorite. <laughs> yeah. Wrestling right. with beard dye. Wrestling with delusions. All right, gentlemen, I can't thank you all for being on. Uh, just as Wrestling we with Jeff Miller's <laughs> oh Jesus! <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Uh, Hughesy, any final thoughts or questions? Uh, yeah, I don't like Wangland. Okay, and your Twitter? Where, we, where can we find the It's Hughesy Hello Show? On iTunes and Spreaker, and you can find the video versions of highlights on uh, Hughesy Entertainment that badly needs uh, viewers and subscribers. And uh, depending when this comes out, the so this current. Week- Interview will be with Vince Curatola, who people may know played Johnny Sack on The Sopranos, and it's very good, and he's quite political. Mm. And what's your Twitter, Husey? Um, honestly, not too sure. Just look me up. I'm uh, at, at the Husey on Twitter and Instagram. That's the only time. Do not send Husey a Facebook request. He does not want that. Leave him alone. I can't um, even send you. Hold on. I can't even send you a Facebook request. Nobody. In fact, I'd actually prefer if nobody actually sends me messages online. Just uh, retweet and like my stuff. Just fucking leave me alone. All right, Joe Feeney, the head of the Creative Control. What do you got this week? Do you got part two of our roundtable from last week? Yeah, I'm put that out Monday due to contractual obligations. It's the only reason I put shows out anymore. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you can see me on Twitter, JFeeney3RD, every Monday on the Raven Effect, every Thursday on Keeping It 100 with Conan. Uh, and follow the Creative Control Network at the CC Network One. And uh, is there any plans for the R and R Network to bring back perhaps uh, the David Radigan show? Because we've all been waiting 
Yes. For Dave to make a triumphant return to podcasting. No comment. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the real deal, Richie Reardon. Final thoughts or questions? No, man. Thanks for having me on the show. It was fun talking with you guys. Um, if there was any heat between us uh, associated through John, I apologize. Uh, hopefully we can move on from there and, and, uh, you guys got a great show. You guys can find me over at, uh, Twitter, I, I, I underscore Reardon. That's R E A R D O N and come check out our uh, new podcast network, the R and R network. Rad Rob. Uh, if you guys want to follow me on Twitter it is at rad Rob gaming. I'm also a Twitch gaming streamer. I stream every Tuesday night, 6 PM central every Sunday afternoon, two in the afternoon. That's twitch.tv slash rad Rob gaming. I have a gaming YouTube channel. Uh, which is called Rad Rod Gaming as well. If you want to tweet and follow our show or my show, um, the Rad Turtles Wrestling Podcast, it is at Rad Turtles POD. And if you want to follow the network on Twitter, uh, it is at RR Pod Network. And I appreciate you having me on. It was good to be back on a Durban show, which I've been on several times. Yes. Uh, but not, not since we had our, our public spat, uh, which again, I apologize for. And, Good to actually talk to Joe and Husey, which I've never really had a one-on-one conversation, you know, face-to-face, you know, with you guys. So good to, uh, to connect with you guys and to kind of hash things out and, uh, and bury the hatchet. And uh, hopefully we'll, we'll move on from here. At, uh, much to the chagrin of Johnny Podcasting, who's going to probably fucking shit himself when he hears all this stuff. So uh, <laughs> it's good to be here, and I appreciate you having me on. It's good to talk to all you guys. I'm I'm intrigued to hear uh, your release tomorrow too for whatever we missed and all that stuff. So. It will be the whole fucking truth, whole effing story. That's right. Well, we can't wait to hear that. We wish great success to the R and R podcast network going forward, gentlemen. Again, Husey, Rad Rob, Richie, Joe Feeney. I hope you guys have a great weekend, and thank you for coming back on the Mike Durban Show. <laughs>